This is Loopline, and in this video I want to go over the basics of testing proxies. So if you already have proxies, you can go ahead and just load them in here. You can use the load button or you can right click and add them from the clipboard. If you need to scrape proxies, let's look at that first. You can click on manage and then there's the option to harvest proxies. Scrapebox comes with 30 or so sources included, so we can just check off a few of these randomly and um, see what we get here. I'm gonna go ahead and just start harvesting and it'll go out there and get us some proxies to test. These two sources obviously had none and these two sources are obviously pulling some in. So basically what's gonna happen is Scrapebox can scrape sources and give you proxies to test and use. However, bearing in mind that these sources are public and they are heavily used by the Scrapebox user base, so success may vary. I'm just gonna go ahead and stop this here. We've got a few thousand sources there. We hit apply, it'll remove duplicates, leaving us with 2,700. I'm gonna check the connections here and I'm actually on a dedicated server, so I'm gonna go very fast. Um, you don't probably want to do this. The default settings are actually ideal unless you're running on like a VPS or that sort of thing. So let's go ahead and test proxies. While we're doing that, you can notice it gives you some options like the country and the port. Um, there is a difference between HTTP proxies and SOX proxies. As a general rule, if you're going to buy proxies or look for public proxies, you're not going to find SOX public proxies. But if you happen to have public proxies that are SOX proxies, you need to tell Scrapebox they're SOX proxies. And you can do that by right clicking on any given proxy and setting it as SOX. And it would say right here that it's SOX. So we also notice down here that we have anonymous proxies and Google Pass proxies. If you want to harvest Google, then you're going to need Google Past proxies. If you want to do anything else, harvest any other engine or use proxies for anything else, then anonymous proxies are what you need. But you should note that Google Past proxies are automatically anonymous proxies as well. So this is almost done here. We've got a few proxies that we could use. Not a lot of Google Pass, but a decent amount of anonymous proxies. I'm just going to stop it. When you stop it, it gives you the option to filter and you can keep proxies which are anonymous or proxies which are Google Pass. And I'm just going to keep the anonymous proxies here. And you can see as a test result, your IP is hidden. And then here we can see this one was Google Pass and that sort of thing. Um, some basic connection settings we already saw. There's also timeouts. Again, usually the defaults are good for those unless you happen to be on a very slow connection. You can increase the timeouts. And under configuration, we can skip the Google test and not waste time on that if we are not going to use the proxies for Google. And the rest of this here I cover in the advanced video, but this is the basic video. So once this is done, we're going to save proxies to the Scrapebox list. If we wanted to save them to a file, that sort of thing, we could do that to save them for later. Let's save them to the list. And now I have my 35 proxies that I can use for scraping uh, search engines or doing whatever. If I already had proxies that I purchased from like a public proxy provider or private proxies, that sort of thing, it works the exact same way. So actually, let me just load in some of those just so we can see. And I've gone ahead and loaded in some proxies here that would be an example of if I had purchased them from a public proxy provider and they're pre-filtered. You can see obviously the success rate is much higher, but again, we test them the same and when they're done, we can filter them and then we can save them back to Scrapebox. So if public proxies, private proxies, they all test the same. Here again, we can mark these as socks. So if I wanted to grab a couple of these because I knew they were socks, I can mark them as socks. And then we see this yes over here. And then the last thing to note is that Scrapebox also provides in the version two cloud proxies that are free and pre-filtered. I'll get into that into the harvesting video, but just know that there is a cloud proxy option. So if you don't want to harvest proxies and test them or purchase proxies from a proxy provider and you just want to get started, you can actually just skip straight to the next video, which is going to be the keyword video. And we can harvest keywords. And then when we get to the um, engine harvester video, which will be the third video, you can just jump right in and start using the cloud proxies. Now, if you want to do serious scraping or if you those happen to not work out for you because obviously Google is going to be heavily used again you can purchase proxies or you can scrape them or do whatever and you can get your own proxy sources again that's in the advanced video this is just the basic video but that is the basic setup for harvesting proxies and testing proxies